We discussed in the previous lesson how we can make classical gates reversible. Now let's use this same technique to make quantum functions. Since the operations we perform on quantum computers must be reversible, if we wanted to apply a function on a quantum computer, the function must be reversible. To do this, we use the same techniques for making classical gates reversible. A standard quantum function looks like this, where we input x and y and get back x and y exclusive ord with f of x. Now, you might be thinking, how are we going to get the output if it is exclusive ord with y? But if we set y to 0, then we get 0 exclusive ord with f of x. 0 exclusive ord with any bit gives us back that bit. This means that 0 exclusive ord with f of x is just f of x. This allows us to query the function and get its output on a quantum computer. We can encode functions within a unitary matrix, and so it is a valid quantum gate. We usually denote a function f as u sub f. So overall, if we apply a function f to the state x0, we get the state x f of x. Then to get the function output, we can measure the second register of qubits. Let's see what happens if we apply a function f to this state, with the output register being the minus state. First, let's rewrite the minus state like this, and distribute the x state into the superposition. Since the function is a unitary operation, it gets distributed into the superposition like any other gate. Then it acts on each of the superposition states individually. Applying u sub f, we get this state. The 0 exclusive or with f of x becomes f of x, and the 1 exclusive or with f of x becomes not f of x. Now let's consider two scenarios. If f of x is equal to 0, then the state becomes 1 on root 2, x0 minus x1, which we can rewrite as x minus. On the other hand, if f of x is equal to 1, then the state becomes 1 on root 2, x1 minus x0. We can factor out the negative 1, leaving us with the state negative 1 on root 2, x0 minus x1. This can be further factored into negative x minus. Now looking at these two states, we can see that the only difference is the phase at the front. We can combine these two equations into negative 1 to the power of f of x, x minus. So, if we apply a function to the state x minus, we get back negative 1 to the power of f of x, x minus. When we query a function in this way, where the output bit is in the minus state, we call it a phase oracle. In the next lesson, we will finally see how quantum computers can outperform classical computers with Deutsch's algorithm, which uses this technique of the phase oracle. One more thing we will discuss when it comes to quantum computers is a theorem called the no cloning theorem. When we want to copy bits on a classical computer, all we need to do is read the values of the bits and write the values to other bits. But with quantum computers, if we have a qubit in an unknown state, say we have psi is equal to alpha 0 plus beta 1, we cannot copy this state if we don't know alpha and beta. If we were to measure psi, we would get 0 or 1. But to copy the state, we need to know the amplitudes, so we would need to know alpha and beta. We could easily copy qubit states where we know the amplitudes by applying the needed gates. But if we do not know the state, we cannot copy a qubit.